Hello everyone, Namaskar, Rajkrishna this side and today we are going to solve one more problem from partial differential equation. So question says that we have to convert the given partial differential equation into its canonical form. So before starting this uh, problem, let me tell you that I have already covered two more problems based on this. First one was when the PD was hyperbolic, then how can we convert it into canonical form? The second problem which I took there, the partial differential equation which was given was parabolic. So then there also we saw how to convert it into its canonical form. And this is the last one. Uh, we may take more problems on these three categories later on. But uh, the basic idea was uh, to be given which uh, will end here. So the third one, which looks as if I'm going to take elliptic, let's check because that is that comes under step. So whenever we say, uh, we talk about uh, the partial differential equation, then uh, this form comes to our mind, RR plus SS plus TT plus a function of X, Y, Z, PQ equals to zero. Fine. So this is categorized into three categories: hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. So let's start off, and uh, this is going to be our step number one. So our step number one is that. We will check that to which categories it belongs. So the given equation can be written as R plus X square and that is T equals to zero. Fine enough. Coefficient of small r is nothing but capital R which is here one. Coefficient of small t is capital T which is here X square. So if we find the value of s square minus 4rt, so s is 0 here, so 0 minus 4 into 1 into x square which is coming out to be minus x square because x square always remains positive so this overall quantity will remain negative so this I can say is less than 0. Whenever this s square minus 4rt remains less than 0, we say it is elliptic. So it's an elliptic partial differential equation. Now let's move on to step number 2. What we do in step number 2, we write lambda quadratic equation. So let's write the lambda quadratic equation which is r lambda square plus s lambda plus t equals to 0. So r is 1 so lambda square s is 0 and t is x square. Let's solve this so lambda square equals to minus of x square. So lambda equals to plus minus iota x. Fine. So to summarize till now, whenever we get a, a hyperbolic equation, the roots comes uh, real and distinct. Whenever we get a parabolic, the root comes equal and real. And in this case, the elliptic one, the root will come imaginary and them being the complement of each other because this is this you can write the real part is zero here isn't it so the real part is zero so this comes this can be written as zero plus iota x zero minus iota x okay fine lambda one lambda two you can state that way so coming to your step number three which is to write the characteristic equation. So this is writing the character.
characteristic equation. What we do? dy by dx plus lambda 1 equals to 0, solve it. dy by dx plus lambda 2 equals to 0, solve it. So dy by dx plus lambda 1 is uh, 0 plus iota x, that means iota x. So let's try to solve this. So we can write dy by dx equals to minus iota x. So dy equals to minus iota x dx integrate y equals to minus iota x square by 2 plus constant c1. So y plus iota x square by 2 equals to c1. Fine. Moving forward, uh, let's write it here. So the next one which you will get is uh, dy by dx. What was the other one? Minus iota x. Integrated. So y equals to iota x square by 2 plus c2. Finally getting y minus iota x square by 2 equals to c2. And the first one was this. Now step 4. was to uh, in uh, the first two scenarios when it was hyperbolic and parabolic we used to take u as whatever is the function of x and y and v as the other function of x and y which is c1 and c2 we replace by u and v in this uh, also we can uh, you do that uh, we, but uh, the better option is uh, Let's take that u as alpha plus iota b and v as alpha minus iota b. Fine. Now, uh, your alpha is the real part which is y in both the cases and your beta is the imaginary part which is x square by 2. Fine. Step 5. In step 5 what we do, we write uh, the P, Q, R, S and T whichever is there in terms of U and V but for simplicity we can say write P uh, what was there in this problem uh, in this current P and Q we always we need and apart from that we will need R and T. So P, Q, R and T in terms of alpha and beta this time. So let's move ahead with that. So first of all P which is del Z let me tell you that uh, z was a function of we can say alpha and beta alpha beta are further functions of x and y i am skipping that u fine so this del z by del x is nothing but p now from del z by del alpha and then that alpha with respect to x Similarly, del z 
by del beta and that beta with respect to x because alpha and beta are also functions of x and y now uh, let's find uh, del alpha by del x so if you different uh, partially differentiate alpha with respect to x you will get 0 so del alpha by del x is giving you 0 what about del beta by del x so if you differentiate x squared you will get 2x and 1 2 is there so 2x divided by 2 is x so del beta by del x is x so you are getting your del z by del x to be equal to uh, first term is getting is gone because you are multiplying it by 0 in the second term you are getting uh, x del z by del beta so one this equation you need and other one is the uh, the relation between operators so in the left hand side we have del by del x in the right hand side we have x and this del by del beta also there. fine so this is there so this is another relation which we have got now what's next Next we have uh, Q. So Q is del Z by del Y. Again Z with respect to alpha, alpha with respect to Y plus Z with respect to beta and then beta with respect to y because z is a function of alpha and beta and alpha beta are further functions of x and y so del alpha by del y and del beta by del y so alpha is y beta is x square by 2 so differentiate both of them partially with respect to y so del alpha by del y you will get 1 and del beta by del y you are getting 0 because that is a function of x. So in this case I can say that my del z by del y will be del z by del alpha and del alpha by del y is 1. So one thing is this. And the other thing we will get is del by del y equals to del by del alpha. Then we need r and t extra. So r is del 2z by del x square. So that can be written as del by del x of del z by del x del by del x I have got a relation which is equal to and del z by del x also I have got some relation that is equal to x del z by del beta so you are getting So here we are then uh, a bit different here because in both the places I am not going to put uh, the inner one uh, I will replace by x del z by del beta the outer one I will uh, let it remain del by del x so let's remove this okay
outer one to be remain del by del x fine here we'll use the product rule so first as it is so x as it is derivative of this one del z by del beta so derivative of del z by del beta with respect to x so that i can write as del by del x of del z by del beta plus this time del z by del beta will remain as it is derivative of uh, partial derivative of x with respect to x that is going to give us 1 so what i am going to do is this is a good term so let's write this in front del by del beta and this i have x and now del by del x i am going to replace so this is x and uh, del by del beta of del z by del beta fine so we are getting sorry here it will del z by del beta so del z by del beta plus this will be x square del 2z by del beta square fine so this is what we got as your r I continued from there so this is your r after this step fine product rule was used here so we have got r also can we go for t now so your t will be del 2z by del y square so del by del y of del z by del y again uh, this will be del by del y can be replaced by del by del alpha and del z by del y is nothing but del z by del alpha del alpha so this becomes your t becomes del 2z by del alpha square so a bit of stop start because of the some noise coming so this is uh, t equals to del 2z by del alpha square so uh, now far you have got the value of p q r and t which we needed now put that back into that equation which we had in the beginning so that equation was i think uh, where was that equation uh, this equation was r plus x square t equals to 0 so r plus x square t equals to 0 scattered so let's put that here also so r plus x square t equals to 0 what is your r your r is this okay plus x square times t so i am writing that here r is this plus x square times del 2z by del alpha square equals to 0 what I am doing this, I am sending uh, this del z by del beta term to the other side and taking x square common, so x square del 2z by del beta square plus del 2z by del alpha square equals to minus del z by del beta so this x square will go to the other side fine and what about x square and alpha is there any relation i think alpha was x square by 2 
yes uh, beta was x square by 2 sorry so I can replace x square by 2 beta so in order to do so I am now doing it here finally so del 2z by del alpha square plus del 2z by del beta square equals to 1 by x square and x square is 2 beta minus 1 by 2 beta del z by del beta so that's how we did uh, this problem uh, let's have a quick summary of what we did till now I think this is the best scenario we had to convert this PD into its canonical form so starting from uh, checking whether which form it belongs to so because s square minus 4 RT was minus of x square x square is always positive so the overall quantity remains always negative so elliptic then lambda quadratic equation which is r lambda square plus s lambda plus t equals to 0 giving us lambda as plus minus iota x third step dy by dx plus lambda 1 equals to 0 dy by dx plus lambda 2 equals to 0 giving us uh, y plus iota x square by 2 as c1 and y uh, minus iota x square by 2 as c2 then we moved on to step 4 where we took uh, just replace c1 and c2 by u and b then further we took uh, some other alpha and beta alpha is the real part beta is the imaginary part now our step uh, our uh, goal was to uh, write p q r and t in terms of alpha and beta because s was not there in this problem so starting off with p uh, here z is a function of alpha beta alpha beta further function of x and y so del z by del x can be calculated as del z by del alpha into del alpha by del x similarly del z by del beta into del beta by del x similarly uh, calculate for uh, q uh, two types of equation are there first equation is between relation between operators and the second one is sim, uh, the value of p and q itself then we moved on to r in r we use product rule here take care of this in mind so x as it is derivative of del z by del beta with respect to x then derivative of x with respect to x and del z by del beta alone okay so there we got that equation and finally the value of t which was simple just del by del y replaced by del by del alpha and del z by del y replaced by del z by del alpha okay then uh, put them all back into that uh, equation r plus x square t and in the end one small change was there in place of x square we put 2 beta uh, i think 2 beta only if i look at the relation which was there where it was it uh, relation relation uh, not able to find that alpha beta alpha beta yes beta was x square by 2 so from there on x square is 2 beta so this one is the final thing into its canonical form which you are seeing right in front of you so I hope uh, it wasn't a problem for you just go step by step 5 steps in total and now we have convert uh, covered the hyperbolic where s square minus 4 it is less than 0 the parabolic where s square minus 4 it is equal to 0 and the elliptic where s square minus 4 it is less than 0 so uh, all three you can uh, get in my playlist of application of partial differential equation hope see hope to see you with more of this problem if you want that's it from my side thanks and have a very nice day